Hello everyone and uh, good to see all of you here today and a very warm welcome to this evening's talk on a season of light. So we have with us today our speaker uh, is Judy Johnson and Judy has worked around the globe as a facilitator and coaching consultant in organisational effectiveness, leadership development and experiential learning. She's done that for 40 years. She holds a Bachelor of Social Work and a Master's of Educational Adult Education. She's also the author of six books. Judy is based in Halifax. Uh, she's a coordinator of the Brahma Kumaris activities in the Atlantic region of Canada. And so I'd like to just mention a couple of things. As you will have seen, we are recording, so the mics and videos are muted. It is live streamed on Facebook, so please do have a look and you might want to catch it later. And finally, please do send any questions you may have via the chat to the host and Judy can have a look at them after the talk. So I'll hand you over to Judy. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Om Shanti. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I think it's evening where you are. It's still 2.30 in the afternoon here, so we have two full hours of daylight left. Um, so this is a, a very timely topic, a season of light. It is a time where many of the world's uh, faith traditions are celebrating special events. So uh, I will ask you to join me for a moment of silence as we begin. But just to name a few, I know the, the Jewish tradition, they have their Hanukkah coming up very soon. Um, the Sikhs have a, a very special um, <clears throat> Uh, this a festival or celebration as well of one of the gurus. Uh, we know the pagans celebrate in this time and the Christians, of course, but it all began. India always begins it all with Diwali in November. <clears throat> so I don't know about you, but many of the BK centers around the world still have those sparkling lights all over the place and we will probably keep them right through this holiday season <clears throat> so it is a special time of light and as we i'm going to light this beautiful candle for us and if you'll just join me in a moment of honoring of silence and of honoring all these beautiful traditions of the world. So here's to a season of light everyone and i'm going to leave this lit you won't be able to see it because i can't hold and talk at the same time oh i can put it here that's nice look at that there that so hopefully you can oh look at that beautiful hopefully you can see that so there's something about light that really captures the imagination and really uh speaks to the heart and uh, we value light so so much that we celebrate it through this period. And of course, here in North America, I don't know about the UK, but here literally in less than an hour and a half at 4 p.m., it will be dark. And so thus begins our long period of hibernation here in Canada because we had our first minus six day yesterday. And it really is a time where we go inwards, where it's warm, where it's cozy, and we have little fireplaces, and we have light. So what is it that we love so much about 
light. I wanted to just share with you kind of a classic image. This is what we do in Canada. Let's see if you can see this image right now. We, um, we sit by the fire a lot. Now that we're inside our homes, we sit by the fireplace or the wood stove. Very common in a Canadian home is to have a fireplace of some kind, but but in nature, especially during the summer and even in the winter for skating times, we'll have bonfires. So what is it uh, about the light that uh, appeals to us so much? I know with a campfire, we're almost like moths to a flame. You know, we're just drawn to sit around the campfire and we're, we're, we're mesmerized. We're transfixed by it. And we're so engaged in what's happening. I think I think we're we're inspired. I think it ignites something in the soul as well. But something I was reflecting on is that while we're all focused inward around the fire, we feel very safe and cozy, partly because the darkness that surrounds us, we don't even see it. Our focus is on the light. And I thought that was a really appropriate message that light gives us at this season of light is this turning our attention to the light. So if you join me, I'd like to do a little experiment to start. I'm going to put a light of a candle on the screen in front of us because I don't think I can hold my candle up quite so steady, but I'm going to put a virtual candle up on the screen. And those of you that are on your phones and watching, you know, you're you're not just on audio, or those of you that are sitting at home in front of a screen, I'll invite you just to um, stare at that little tiny flame of this candle. It's a virtual candle, so there's no sound for us. But a flame is a flame, and it really is quite beautiful. I ask you just to look at it, about 10 seconds. And if you can take off your glasses, rub your hands together so that you feel the heat and the warmth in your hands. And then just cover your eyes completely so that it's black, completely dark. And I'll ask you to see what you see on the screen of your mind in the darkness. Now, I don't know if this worked for you. Try it again if it didn't work. But what I see after staring at the flame when I close my eyes and make it dark inside. What I actually see is the flame. I still see that little spark of white light uh, that is the candle flame. And uh, I think that's actually, as we enter this period of physical darkness in the world right now, I think this is our job, is to hold that flame in our mind, is to keep the light alive inside of us during this dark period. And the dark period is because, of course, of the, the time change. But I think metaphorically, we're in a, a dark period of humanity as well. So I feel like that's actually our job right now, is to be holding the memory of light, um, even though there is darkness around us, but to keep our attention on the light. And in this season of light, this is probably the greatest gift we could offer the world, is to keep ourselves light, to stay connected to the light, and to keep light alive. So I would like to explore this evening five different dimensions of light um, that will be important for us to stay, to keep alive at the time of darkness. So I'm going to go through these dimensions and I'll, I'll share screen a bit, but then not share screen because it's also nice just to have, um, to be able to see 
a face, not just up in the corner of the screen. So um, I thought we'd explore five dimensions. And one of the first demand, oh, yeah, and I actually believe that it's only in the darkness that you can see the light. So I guess I was thinking about those of us that are keeping our minds light, keeping our attention on the light during this period of darkness. Uh, we actually offer a great service to the world, but it's actually only in the darkness that light becomes so very, very visible. So it's a wonderful service to do for the world. So the five dimensions I wanted to explore tonight is what white light seems to do to us. And one of them is delight. I don't know about you, but I feel such delight in front of a candle. I feel it in front of a fireplace. I feel it in front of a, a bonfire. I feel it with the Diwali lights, the little fairy lights that sparkle around our meditation center here. Um, <clears throat> they just fill me with delight. So there's something that the light does inside of us that ignites <clears throat> this feeling of delight. And it got me reflecting about, okay, if my job in the world right now, if I accept this, which is very much part of our practice in the Brahma Kumaris and, and one I take personally as well, if I choose to stay light and offer light to the world, then how does delight help me? How does staying delighted help me and uh, we do a little reflection every night before we go to bed we have a little chart book we've created for ourselves here in Halifax and we kind of love playing with this chart book but every 18 19 days our cycle of questions um, repeats and so every 18 19 days before I go to bed, I sit with my little journal and there's a question that pops up every night different. But every 19 days, I get this question, what delighted me today? It's probably my favorite question of all the questions we ask ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and I love it because it's not a thought I typically have before I go to bed. But when I'm asked the question in my little booklet, instantly I can connect to something in the day that caused delight for me. And so I was just thinking today, if I were asked that question, what delighted me today? I would say a couple of things. There's um, a sister here at the center who has been not really aware of her value in the service that we do. And recently had the experience where it became very clear to her the value. And I, I witnessed that today and it just made me light up inside with such delight to witness her stepping into her own light. So for me, what delights me often is seeing someone else lit up, seeing someone else um, being their best or discovering something about themselves. Um, we have a brother here who's very shy to speak. And the other day he spoke about something that he was very passionate about. Mm -hmm. And he just lit up inside. And we all lit up looking at him. We were just delighted to see it. So I was thinking about how important it is to pay attention to that which delights me. Because it keeps me light inside. It lights me up. So I'll invite you to think about, and we'll just do this as a very short little, um, not even really a meditation. Oh dear, am I sharing screen? I'm not having a technical issue with myself. Oh yeah, there we go. Delight, there we go. Um, <clears throat> what is it that delights you? What is it that makes you feel delight inside. So even just in this moment, if you reflect for yourself on today, and what is it that delighted you today? And then just see how you feel as you remember 
those things that delighted you today. So one of the dimensions of light is the delight we feel lights us up inside. And if we want to stay light, stay close to the light, bring light into the world, watching for what delights us is a wonderful practice, lights us up inside. Um, for me, it's very often the small things. They're just the tiny little things in life that um, come unexpectedly, I suppose. They're almost like a surprise. Um, and especially when uh, life turns out in the right way. So for instance, we had a flood here and we've just to just this morning finished the work. Well, I have a little bit of painting to do, but mostly it's done. And um, the delight of this gentleman who's been orchestrating the rebuild, he showed up for the very last time and in his last minute visit to sign off and say, I think it's done. Yes, I think it's done. He said, you know, I've got a big uh, discount up at the local store for, do you need any appliances? And I said, well, just this morning we realized our dishwasher had broken. We need one. And he said, oh, well, you know, head off to the store, send me a picture of what you want, and we'll order it for you at 50% off. And it was like such a moment, such an unexpected moment, and the delight of that. So life has a way of doing this for us, showing us unexpected moments, offering us unexpected gifts if we're paying attention. So that'll go in my little book tonight is the delight from that. So paying attention to what delights us is one of the things that helps us stay light. The next one, light, metaphorically speaking, uh, and this is a spiritual issue really, but um, you know, we're celebrating the season of light with candles and fairy lights and bulbs, light bulbs. But spiritually speaking, if we use light as a metaphor, this light as a feather is something we think about. Or being carefree, meaning I'm not heavy or burdened. I feel light inside. I'm unburdened like a balloon when it's released. Or light hearted. All of these kind of the same thing and that inside of me, I am feeling light. I'm not burdened. I'm not heavy. And of course, this is a huge part of our practice in Raja Yoga is how to keep our hearts light. Because we all know when our heart is heavy, or when I feel my mind feels the burden of all my responsibilities and duties and to-do list, when that happens, you know, my face is usually not sparkling. Usually my face in those moments when I'm in that awareness of the burden I'm carrying in those moments, my face is probably not sparkling. It's probably a little bit dim, and I am not giving much light to the world. So to be light, carefree, unburdened, lighthearted, all different words for the same inner state of mind. Metaphorically speaking, this lightness is actually a spiritual issue because we carry burdens and our hearts get heavy, not light, when we are tied to the burdens. And there's two types of burdens typically. One is past pains, regrets, and mistakes. Those tend to be like emotional burdens. They're feeling burdens. Um, somewhere in me is a wound or somewhere my conscience is biting me. Um, <clears throat> and in this way, my heart is is heavy. Um, but the other weight is of the responsibilities. We did a session here once. It was just fantastic. We had these, we live by the ocean. We have all these beautiful big rocks. People collect rocks all the time. And so everybody, there was a big basket of rocks at the front of the room with at least, I don't know, 50, 60 rocks. And we were all asked to write a short list of our main responsibilities in life. So I recall putting down, you know, my children, uh, the work, um, care for the meditation center and my own, say, spiritual study and, and uh, practice. 
so four things. And then we were asked to put them on a continuum, which one for us weighs more heavily. So we had to compare our responsibilities one to the other. And, you know, even if there was a tie, we were asked, well, if they're close, just decide which one is the heaviest of the lot. <laughs> I can't remember right now what I put as the top one at that time. That's a while ago now. But then we were asked to come to the front of the room <laughs> and to pick a rock that represents that responsibility. And we had our little clipboards, as we do, because we were writing on our clipboards. So we were asked to put the rock on our clipboard, on our lap, and just feel the weight of it. We all felt the weight of this rock. And I can't do this with you because we're not in a, a room together except the cyber room. Um, but you get you get the feeling, you get the picture. And then we were asked to lift this little um, board, our, our little clipboard, with the big rock on it and to lift it up and then to put it on our heads. <laughs> and then we were asked to just sort of look around the room at everyone else with their rock on their head and then to just hold that on our head. And I think we were timed. It was a minute, a minute and a half, two minutes. It wasn't very long, but just long enough to really begin to feel the weight of this rock. And while we were holding it, we were asked to think about that particular responsibility in our life and what is it that makes it feel like such a weight. And then at the end of, of that short time, I think I think there was a countdown. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna remove this in a few seconds. And there was a countdown for five, four, three, two. And then we get to take it off our head and put it on our lap. And in that moment, Actually, I think we put it on the floor so that we had absolutely no physical connection to that rock anymore. And I could just feel like this little balloon. I could just feel like it would let go. It's just like it was gone. The weight, the burden, the heaviness. And I felt it viscerally in my body. Sometimes when that happens, it makes a much clearer, stronger message than just talking about something. And I remember in that moment feeling, oh my gosh. What a difference to not be holding on, to not be carrying that weight on my head all the time. And so then we explored the letting go. So for myself to be lighthearted, unburdened, carefree, light as a feather, internally, I have to do the work I can if I choose do the work of letting go. And of course, it's not as easy as it sounds. If it was, we would have like that rock, just put it down, let it go. But of course, responsibilities we care very much for, my children, you know, this meditation center. So it's not that I want to let the responsibility go, but I can change my relationship to the responsibility. So the question is, how of course. And, you know, face, heal, accept the burden of the past. That's one aspect. So anything I know I'm carrying in my heart because someone did something to me and I can't forgive them, or I have done something I can't forgive myself for, or uh, still the hurt, the wound of it is still there. This is the whole realm of healing. And this is this is deep internal work. And this, okay, maybe it needs some thought, uh, talk therapy, as they call it, you know, some journaling, maybe seeing someone to talk about that, a professional, someone who knows this business of, of listening without adding weight or energy or listening without, you know, getting conversational or rescuing you or, <clears throat> but this speaking about it, facing it, accepting it is one aspect of the healing process. But the other, of course, is actually just to be in silence and heal. And a lot of that is what our meditation practice does. It's just allows us to be in a silent inner state and detach from the pain and then go up to God and give it light 
just give it light. And it doesn't go away immediately, of course, not something that's been with me for a long, long time, but it does dissolve. And over time, it recedes into the background of my consciousness and isn't something that um, that draws my attention so much, that draws my energy, that feels like a burden. So that's the one aspect of unburdening myself, letting go, so my heart can be light. But the other one is these responsibilities, these stones on my head. <laughs> and, um, you know, we say here, let go, let God, you know, give my responsibilities to God. Well, God's not going to do them. I still have to do them every day. I have to clean the center. I have to do the printing. I have to do the various things that come with motherhood, come with a professional duties. But I can change my relationship to those responsibilities, and I can put myself in what we call here a trustee consciousness, a feeling of, okay, it may be maybe in my hands to do this, to take care of this right now. But actually, these children aren't mine. And it's the intensity of this feeling that they're mine. And the ego that comes alive when I do that, it's actually that mechanism that is creating weight. And that lightness comes when I reframe my relationship with everything that is a responsibility in my life. And I say, yes, I'm the one whose hands will be doing this, whose heart, whose head will be involved. But actually, if I look at these souls that are my children as, well, they're God's children, and I'm just a temporary caregiver, then it reduces the burden, reduces the intensity of that weight. The same thing for the meditation center. It's not actually mine. In fact, if I think it's mine, I'm going to get in the way of people being able to come. They will always feel the limitations as if this was Judy's, and it's not. I am part of a team. I'm part of a much greater movement called the Brahma Kumaris. It's not mine at all. I am a trustee in this place to help care for this center. So this trustee consciousness is very, very important when it comes to letting go so that I can be light. And when I can let go and I then can become more light in relation to my um, responsibilities, then I'm just lighter. I'm just lighter, I'm happier, I'm brighter. Um, and the energy, therefore, that I bring to others is an energy of lightness. So when they begin to tell me about their burdens, it doesn't automatically trigger my sense of heaviness, the weight I feel in relation to my responsibilities, because I have actually unburdened myself. I have done the inner work to unburden myself. So there might be some questions that come up around this one after, but as we, we think about this, this is only dimension number two. The qualities of light that matter to us if we want to remain light and be a light in the world at this time. So let me invite you just to close your eyes for 30 seconds and just consider what could you let go of in order to keep your heart light? And identify in each of the two areas, if you can, in the one area, which is about something you're keeping in your heart that you have to let go of, an old wound or an old resentment or an old, um, yeah, something you can't forgive yourself for. Uh, so that domain and the other, of course, think about the responsibilities you have and how you could lessen the burden within them by simply changing the way you think about them. So just take a moment and sit in silence. What is it you could let go of so that you could become more light-hearted?
nice to visualize a balloon being cut free from that bench and just floating up. Imagining your heart, which is really just your, really another word for soul. It's the energy of consciousness. You just let that become light. Let's so, Let's move on to another dimension of light. This is a beautiful dimension of light, and that is the dimension of brightness. Often when we refer to light, we say bright. Oh, she's so bright. I hear people say that about babies these days. Oh, she's so bright. Um, we have a new baby here in the center, and, uh, you know, you can just, you know, the purity, the the brightness in her eyes. It's like her face sparkles and it's like a magnet. We're all completely drawn to just stare at her and uku and ga and as we do. Anyways, brightness, though, is another dimension of light, both physical light, but spiritual light, of course. And this is really about my sparkling and what is it that makes me sparkle? And it's probably different for all of us. Um, but really, if we think about sparkling, sparkling is just that I am lit with my own inner light. Um, and usually that's because I'm doing something that I really love to do. Um or something that I was built for. And I know for me, I was built for facilitating. I was built for creating, or at least helping create, co-creating unity in groups. I know I was built for creativity. Whenever I'm getting to be creative or getting to facilitate, I mean, those are my probably my happiest moments because I'm expressing what I was built for. You know, we often talk about spiritual DNA, and that's kind of my inner purpose or my speciality, or it's more than talents, it's more than skills, because uh, I wondered why one day, why I have spent 40 years developing facilitation skills, developing um this creative work with groups. And of course, there had to be something behind that. Why did it? Because those are just skills and techniques. And okay, I have a great toolkit now, but, or, to, and I've developed maybe a talent that was there, but what would have motivated me to do that? Well, it was obviously an expression of the soul. It was what I was built for. I love unity. I love harmony. Harmony. I love creativity. It's just, it's a natural part of me and a, a big part of me. So when I'm able to express that, um, I sparkle at my best. I read a beautiful quote the other day, and it was actually from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who did the work around, um, she created the five stages of grieving in the transition process from you know, being alive to dying, I think we call it transition process now in the stages of grief. And she said, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within. That beautiful. So, of course, here I am, a stained glass window with multiple uh, talents and facets and dimensions to me. Um, but what is it that makes that shine and look beautiful like a stained glass window does? Um, it's my inner light shining at that time. So, this dimension of Light that is about brightness, that is about sparkling, is about what lights you up inside. And um, just looking around at the center here, um, we have a, a woman at the center here who, whenever, whenever we have a program, you know, we've all taken turns being the ones to open the front door and greet people and bring them in and settle them in. But no one sparkles, no one shines the way this one person does. And when it's her turn to open the door, whoa, she just lights up. She's definitely the best at it. She's the one who loves it the most. 
And of course, it's because it's what she was built for. There's something in her that just responds to people. She loves to greet. She loves to host. She's at her very best when she's welcoming people. It's like she's a, yeah, she's just a host by nature. Um, not everyone else is is built for that. They don't enjoy it so much. So I watch her do this and it, it makes me sparkle watching her sparkle, of course. So we can all find that thing or that series of things that lights us up inside so that we sparkle. But this is one of the ways that we can stay light, is to stay very closely connected to those inner aspects of me, those inner qualities that are kind of primary to my well-being because they are my innate self. They are my kind of purpose for being here. They're what I was built for. So I'll invite you now for a moment. Oh, oh yes. And I, I had thought about this too. It's really only when I stay lit. <laughs> like if I'm sparkling inside, okay, maybe my thing is different than yours, but when I'm ignited, doing, sparkling by the thing that lights me up inside, then really in that kind of space or that energy, that vibration, and only when I'm like that, really, can I light others. So in my presence, others will feel inspired also to be lit, whatever that is for them, which might be different. So when my light is lit, I can light others. So what part of you, when expressed, makes you sparkle? A beautiful thing to consider. And I'll invite you now just to, whether you're staring out the window or staring at a candle in front of you, or even just staring at the screen here with this sparkler lit on the screen, just take a moment and consider, especially as we're ending this year, and entering a new, it might be you've discovered some new dimensions of yourself. There might be parts of you that are coming alive, coming awake. Maybe they're just little baby sparklers right now, but you can feel that they're getting ready to sparkle. Um, but just take a moment and reflect on what part or parts of you, when expressed, make you sparkle, or what within you is ready to sparkle now. And just take a moment and consider that. It's like knowing when I'm at my best and you know, I can't, I can't really orchestrate all the conditions around me. You know, I might be at my best when, you know, it's a dim light and I've got a candle and it's quiet and the day is done and it's pre-bed and there's nothing to do. And I put my feet up and ah, I have a moment. Okay, maybe those are the conditions when I'm at my best, but I can't really control all the conditions in my world, but I can find inside of me what is that thing when expressed you know makes me sparkle so again that spiritual work for us to do and to not allow ourselves to get dim to notice when my sparkles fizzling out a little bit and to consider it um a necessary act to come back to myself and think, okay, I'm I'm getting dim. I'm feeling my sparkle fade. What do I need to do to keep myself glowing, sparkling bright? Because actually the world needs me to be a bit like that right now. <laughs> and of course, it's a service for others. So next dimension of light. I love this enlightened. Beautiful to see this little face of a yogi soul. Indian origins, could be Buddhist, could be Hindu, could be anything of the Eastern tradition, which is where we get this word enlightened from. But of course, it's when the light within is lit. 
And beyond the sparkle of me doing expressing in the world my best, as you can see in this image, this yogi face is turned within, you know, that sublime look on the face, the sweet smile. It's really got nothing to do with external sense organ pleasure or stimulus. It's a soul turned within and feeling their own inner light shining in such a way that it's it's like the calming quiet of that little campfire or candle it's like the candle within and this of course is something it's the reason why we practice meditation it's the reason why we study spiritual things is because they light us up inside and um, not in the way of let me go out and greet people at the front door or facilitate groups. This is more an internal um, satisfaction. This is um, um, feeding the soul so that the soul is becoming awake to its own inner beauty. And it's very much a private event. I'm not really talking about it. I'm not really expressing it through service or external actions. This is an inner, a growing sense internally of satisfaction and contentment with the self, because I am seeing within me new dimensions. The light, the little candle that I've uh, you know, lit in the outside world is now lit inside of me, but I am actually exploring all of the dark corners inside my own mind, my own psyche, my own self. And in so doing, I am actually bringing light to darkened places. And when I shine a light into a darkened part of myself, I discover, oh, there's actually beauty there. Oh, there's actually something that is quite precious and because I hadn't seen it, I wasn't using it. It wasn't active in my life, in my personality, in my expression of myself. And I think what we discover, certainly what I discovered in Raj Yoga Meditation, <laughs> and this is a quote I found the other day, someone said, due to divine reasons, my light cannot be dimmed. So many of us, I think, find in our journey before we come to meditation, we may have discovered a little bit of darkness in ourselves. And in fact, we may have been, as I was, at our darkest place, maybe without knowing it. I, I, I wouldn't at the time have said I was in my darkest place because I was actually very successful and had a beautiful family. Um, but I was never content. I was living in such insecurity that it was endless hard work keeping myself distracted from my inner darkness. And I think that was it. I was distracting myself. It was a full-time job to be engaged in, in stimulating endeavors, uh, adventurous experiences, um, Mm, social interactions. And well, it all seemed really fun. Only I knew inside how desperate the soul was to come back home to the self, to actually discover the quiet beauty of my own inner space lit by the candle of self-awareness. So enlightenment is really about me finding me. And so I invite you now, let's get my PowerPoint back here. I invite you now to take a moment and just think about um, what is it that would help you in this time of darkness or in this time, especially in this time of frenetic activity, which is, even though it's only December 1st, my goodness, it's already begun. The shops are full of Christmas things. Already people are asking me, what do you want for Christmas? And I have no idea. So even to think about what I want has ignited a bit of an inner, mm, I don't have any desires. It actually just feels like a homework assignment. I'm looking around thinking, what could we use here? What's needed? 
but I think in the in the larger darkness of the world at this time, and all of the things of the dark that pull me outside, which would include shopping, which would include consumerism, which would include the desire to please all my people during this Christmas period, my concern for them, my my worry about them, all of these things pull me into the dark. So in this time of darkness, what helps you stay spiritually awake, spiritually lit, aware of yourself internally? And even just taking a moment to make a quiet commitment to that. Um, we've just begun this Advent calendar meditation. I know Ruth, Ruth has got it there in Manchester. And for some reason, we have it's our biggest sign up every year. Our numbers are quite small here in Halifax. It's a very small place, but somehow this one thing really excites people. And I think, and it's because you get a 15 minute meditation in your inbox every day in your email, and it's been curated for you. So it's a eight or nine minute meditation commentary, and then a three or four minute song. So if you just surrender yourself and say, I've got 15 minutes, I'm dedicating 15 minutes every day. That's all the work you have to do because it comes ready made. And it comes to you or it comes on WhatsApp, whatever. But um it's a very easy commitment to make for the next 24 days. So I invite you to think about what it, what tiny commitment could you make to yourself so that in this time of dark, you can stay spiritually awake. You can stay tuned inwards to the inner candle, the inner flame of self-awareness in a world that will keep pulling you out. So let's just take a moment and I'll I'll ask you to look at that face if you can see. And if not, stare out the window wherever you are and just take a moment to reflect. What can you do for yourself during this season of light to keep yourself tuned inwards and awake spiritually to who you are so that you can stay in light? And then our last dimension of light. So this is the greatest light of all, of course, and this is the light we cannot see. This is the light of God, the light of the divine source. And I know for me, staying close to this sacred light, this divine light has uh, made a world of difference to my general state of lightness internally. And uh, when I first encountered the Brahma Kumaris, I had no interest in God, um, but I had an experience that lit me up inside, and I know it was a divine experience. I could not have done that for myself. But the experience, which made me feel so much love for the one who created this experience for me, was that it was actually a feeling I had of myself that was so completely different than the feeling I had of Judy. Judy, the mom, the facilitator, the worker, the friend, the sister, all that. I had a, just a completely different experience, a different feeling of who I was. And it was so beautiful, and it was so profound, and it was so light that I just wanted to have that experience forever always. And um, when I understood the one, I understood kind of immediately that I hadn't done that for myself. This was done for me. And no human could have done that for me. That was clear. So I knew it was a divine presence that had done this for me. Um, that meant it, it sort of opened the world or it opened a relationship that was eternal, but had been forgotten by me. And uh so the question to all of us at this time is what keeps you close to the divine? So before we open to questions, I think if we could maybe just have just even a minute or two of meditation, unless Ruth or Angela, you'd prefer that we save the meditation to the end, I'm also happy to do that. Um, but this would come to the end of the five dimensions of light in this season of light that are actually inner dimensions for me. One is delight. The next, of course, is being light, unburdened, lighthearted. 
And the next one is, I can't even remember now, bright and sparkling. And the next one is enlightened, tuned into my own light. And the last one is staying close to the divine light. So Angela, I'll go with your guidance here. I know they'll keep your picture off. So if you unmute and, and guide me on whether the meditation is now or yes. at the yes. end of the questions. Judy, it's Judy, nice to it's have it now. That's fine. fine. Great. So let's do this now. If you're looking at the screen, you can just look at that tiny point of light, or you can close your eyes if you would like. And just, just take a deep breath in so that we're aware of our body and breathe out again. In so that your lungs are full, your inner space is full, and you just release it out so that your body relaxes wherever you're sitting. This brings us back to our body, which is really helpful, actually, because our mind wanders in a million directions and grounding it back. OK, here I am in this body is always a very good starting place for meditation. But now if you close your eyes or you focus on the light, just come inside to the awareness of you as light. The subtle light behind the eyes, it's the light of the soul, it's the light of awareness. This light, of course, is like a flickering flame. For some of us, that light is quite dim, but it is still flickering. This might be the light of your intuition, that little tiny voice inside that says, you need meditation, or you need to get fit, or whatever that voice is saying on behalf of your own well-being. That is the little dim light of the soul that can only get brighter when paid attention to. Well, let's just pay attention to that little flame inside of you. You can visualize it like a candle flame flickering. And in this moment, just see a little sparkle as you're aware of your own beauty, what lights you up inside, what delights you. You just see little flicker sparkles coming from the flame. But then I'd like you to imagine a divine flame, a divine light adding power to your inner flame so that your own candle suddenly, it just glows so much brighter and the flame is steady and stable and very powerful. As this power from the divine is augmenting your own inner light, because that's why we need a divine light at this time is for power. And then my own inner qualities are lit. I enjoy a better life, a better experience of myself. And that brings me closer to the light, of course, as I, I shine like the divine light. So with this imagery, the candle lit, the divine light, giving you power and light. Come back to the sense of yourself sitting in this chair and celebrate your self as a being of light in the season of light. Om Shanti. So we do have some questions, Judy. Great. And I have one private. So you go ahead, Angela. Yeah, sure. So the first one is, what if you don't know your sparkle? I feel oh, like I have no light from within. Mm. Oh, bless you. Um, well, get out there to your meditation center and discover that spark inside. I mean, well, once you discover you're a soul, there's this whole new world that opens now. If you've been there and you have the 
idea that you're a soul, but not the experience of it, then ask for a little more guidance in the meditation place where you are, because it is so important to go beyond the intellectual and the conceptual. Okay, I know I'm a light, fine. But I have to really feel it. I have to experience it because then I do become lit inside. Now, in terms of speciality, we don't always know our speciality, but it's a pretty easy project and one worth doing with yourself, maybe over this holiday period, if you get a day or quiet, some quiet time. And that project is just to do a lifeline, a graph of moments in my life when I was happiest and moments where I was sort of lower. So lit and not so lit. And then just to study what were the qualities I was able to express in those moments. So it's like a research project into yourself. And you will begin to see a theme over time. Ah, usually when I'm able to express this kind of quality, I'm at my happiest. So this is work that only you can do. You can look at your life and those moments when you are happiest are the moments where typically you're able to express uh, what is inside of you to its fullest. Now, there may be a series, there may be a number of conditions that are also true external to you, but don't examine that. Examine the internal. What qualities are you able to express in those moments? Because that will tell you about your own sparkle. And good luck. Thanks, Judy. And another question we have uh, is, can you share details of the Advent calendar meditations? Yes, I can actually probably even put the link in the chat box if I can be fast enough. Let's see if I can do that. Yes, we've been doing this for years. Um, we invite people to dedicate 15 minutes only of time every day for 24 days and you know we're in a christian part of the world so people relate to the 24 days of you know the advent but um also you know we have lots of people here who are of the jewish tradition and they also do this so it's not really about christianity it's more about just this is a time to give peace to the world so there it is i put the um you can register if you want and what happens so we've just asked people to dedicate 15 minutes every day for the next 24 days of september of december to um generating peace for the world and this year we've done something a little bit and so when you register you get an email check your spam box because sometimes it's there and then you just open and you dedicate yourself to doing that every day set a time for 15 minutes every day you will feel the benefit but also of course for our world so it's giving the gift of peace gift of light spiritual light to the world um yeah that's what it is yeah thank you and there's a question from Konstantinos: is judy doing in-person meditations and or sessions Yes, in our meditation center here in Halifax, we are. Yes. Check out Great. the BK Halifax website. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, you already just answered another question, which was about speciality. So you've already given us some insight um, to cover that. And let me check if there's any more. That's it for the questions. And so well, yes, I have we... one here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and this just came uh direct. Um, there is a verse in the Quran, God is the light of the heavens and the earth. Isn't that beautiful? Probably one meaning of it might be that. Only with an enlightening firm belief in God and a hereafter, someone can make a satisfying sense of the existence of universe and the self. What a beautiful interpretation of that. So God is the light of the heavens and the earth. And so understanding that is only with an enlightening firm belief in God and in a hereafter, something much bigger than just us. Someone can make a satisfying sense of the existence of the universe and the self. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's very precious. And I think I would add from my own experience, um, 
having an experience of the divine. So a belief in God wasn't really enough to do it for me, but the experience that I have of God through uh, meditation completely has transport transformed uh, me and also made me so it's given me so so much more light and yes a better understanding of the world as well thank you for that so thank you very much judy for uh, inspirational and interactive enjoyable talk and oh, uh, here we We've no. got our little light. We just have just a moment of silence together yes. with our little candle lighting the flame for all of those traditions, faith traditions that are celebrating and even the ones that aren't just a beautiful um, moment of silence. Shantin, thank you to all of you sending uh, thank you notes in the chat box. That's beautiful. I'm glad you were. I'm glad I was here with you. That was just so natural and lovely to share with you. So thank you, Angela and Ruth and the Manchester Center Inner Space for doing all that you do so beautifully. So, Om Shanti. So quite a big thank you, Judy. And also thank you to everybody for coming along this evening to the talk and joining in. And so just a couple of things before we finish. We do have some more events coming up. Our next event online is in two weeks time. That's on the 15th of December. And that is on In the Stillness. So same time, 6.30. And um, after that, we have a couple of seminars actually this week coming up. One is on Tuesday on being more positive, think more positively. And the other one is on assertiveness, which is this Thursday evening. And so those are in-person events. And we have the next in-person event is next Friday, 8th of December, Decoding the Dreaming Mind. And the final one, the day after that is a workshop, Journey of the Hero. And so that should be an interesting one. That's so that's Saturday, 7th of October at 10.30. And so those are the events that we have coming up. Please do keep in touch on our website, Facebook, Twitter. All the details are there. So once again, have a look on Facebook if you like. And thank you all for coming along. Thank you. Thank you, Judy.